हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे विल बी स्टार्टिंग अ न्यू सेक्शन दैट इज पेडियाट्रिक ऑर्थोपेडिक्स सो इन पेडियाट्रिक ऑर्थोपेडिक्स विल बी डिस्कसिंग टुडे द हिप रीजन राइट सो फर्स्ट अबाउट लिम्प वी नो व्हाट इज अ लिम्प बट व्हाट कैन बी द कॉज ऑफ लिम्प सो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर द कॉजेज ऑफ लिम्प इन सम एज ग्रुप्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन लेस देन फोर ईयर्स वॉट कैन बी द कॉज ऑफ लिम्प इट कैन बी बिकॉज ऑफ डेवलपमेंटल डिस्प्लेज ऑफ हिप और कंजरेटल डिसलोकेशन ऑफ हिप इट कैन बिकॉज ऑफ सेबल पैल्सी इन्फेंटाइल कॉक्सावेरा और अ मस्कुलर डिस्ट्रॉफी सो दीज आर द कॉजेज ऑफ लिम्प इन लेस देन फोर ईयर्स राइट रिमेंबर दिस एज ग्रुप बिकॉज दिस एज ग्रुप विल हेल्प इन सॉल्विंग द क्वेश्चन इन फोर टू एट ईयर्स पोलियो एंड पर्थीज सो पर्थीज एज पर अ टॉपिक ऑफ पेडाट्रिक ऑर्थोपेडिक्स it is causing a limp in 4 to 8 years developmental dysplasia in less than 4 years right in 8 to 12 years now the age is a little older scaphy that is the slipped capital femoral epiphysis scaphy will cause the limp now limp can be painful or painless that means a limp associated with pain every time the patient will put a foot on the ground the patient will experience pain so if the limp is painful then these ca can be the causes if the limp is painless then it can be because of developmental dysplasia of hip or coxa vera etc right if the limp is painful then it can be because of parthes remember parthes has got a painful limp you can read somewhere written painless limp but typically parthes is having a painful limp right also slipped capital femoral epiphysis kefi osteochondritis dissecans of the knee which will lead to loose bodies in the knee joint so that will become a painful walking painful limp and any inflammation and infection obviously of the joint lining will lead to a limp that will be painful because of the infection or the inflammation right so now we'll discuss the congenital dislocation of hip or properly known as developmental dysplasia of hip that is the ddh what can be the risk factor of the ddh now remember ddh is associated with the crowding phenomena see crowding phenomena happens when there is lack of amniotic fluid in the uterus so when there is lack of amniotic fluid it will lead to pressure on to the parts of the body so that will lead to crowding of the appendages or crowding of the limbs so if there is crowding of the limbs then not just ddh it will have multiple things like congenital dislocation of the knee metatarsus adductus etc so risk factor if we see it is happening most commonly in the first born because the uterus is not that adapted to the pregnancy in female sex mostly because of the laxity of the joints so first born female child and definitely as a part of crowding phenomena that is in oligohydramnios with oligohydramnios you will see a torticollis metatarsus adductus also and oligohydramnios is also associated with breech presentation so it is also associated with breech torticollis that is a twisted neck metatarsus adductus which looks like this that means there is adduction of the foot at the metatarsus level so metatarsus adductus and ddh has got a familial association but crowding is there but there is no increased risk in twin pregnancy it has been seen that in twin pregnancy despite a big despite a big uterus and more volume of the fetus inside for example there are two fetus inside but still there is no risk of ddh but in case of oligohydramnios the patient can have a ddh so first born female child crowding phenomena oligohydramnios ddh right and associated abnormalities are these now what is the pathology of developmental dysplasia of the hip so basically what is happening developmental dysplasia dysplasia basically means abnormal abnormal configuration of the bone so there is abnormal development of the bone so dysplasia of the hip 
So what will happen? The basically there is failure of containment of head in the acetabulum. So there is dysplasia of the acetabulum. So acetabulum is having dysplasia, which is leading to a deformed acetabulum, and the hip is not able to get contained in the acetabulum. So it will get a dislocated or subluxated. So primary pathology is a shallow acetabulum, not a deformed femur head. It is a shallow acetabulum, right? And because of the shallow acetabulum, what will happen? The hip will get subluxated, it will go out and after subluxation, this ligamentum teres, which is a ligament attaches to the head of the femur, it also gets elongated and hypertrophied. Because of this movement, what will happen? The labrum, acetabular labrum will also become averted and hypertrophic femoral head is spherical usually and because of the lack of containment the capsule will also become loose and ultimately if the head goes out too much then we can have a hour glass contracture that means here is the femoral head here is the capsule and here is the acetabulum so head becomes so much out that the capsule becomes contracted in between that means there is no direct contact between the head and the acetabulum so that is called a R glass R glass contracture of the capsule right 